whole Cacephala fusca is a true fly, like the fruit fly Drosophila melanogaster, but unlike Drosophila, it's a predator. Ocacephala fusca catches smaller insects as they fly above it, taking off and plotting a course to intercept them. Another set of animals that have a similar mode of life are the dragonflies, like this one. The difference between a Holcocephala and a dragonfly is its size. Holcocephala is ten times smaller. We wanted to find out how its small size had affected the way in which Holcocephala catches its prey and the adaptations that it uses to do so. Here you can see the head of Holcocephala, whilst here you can see the head of a dragonfly. If we put the two heads side by side into the same scale, the size difference is evident. As in most insects, the image forming vision of Holcocephala fusca is dominated by its compound eyes. These organs use an array of lenses to focus light onto an array of receptors below. In eyes like Holcocephalus, each lens receptor unit is sheathed to avoid stray light. Together, they assemble a view of the world with each unit of lens and receptor forming a pixel. One of the most obvious characteristics of the eye of Holcocephala is the way that the lenses on the front more than double in size as they get towards the central region. This acts in much the same way as opening the aperture on a camera lens. As it widens, it lets in more light. These wide aperture lenses help avoid the distorting effects of diffraction. We used hanging drop technique to focus through the lenses of the eye and find the distance at which an image is formed. This tells us the focal length. In the centre, where the lenses get much larger, there's an extended focal length, and the effect of this is like zooming in on a camera lens. By extending the focal length, the sensor at the bottom samples a smaller region of visual space. Finally, we used a transmission electron microscope to look at the size of the receptors at the bottom of the eye. As we get towards the centre of the eye, where those lenses get so much larger, we find that the receptors get smaller. When this is combined with a longer focal length, it means that each of these units is sampling a smaller region of visual space, thus increasing the resolution of the eye where these adaptations are present. We find similar adaptations in the eyes of dragonflies that have comparable resolution. Only in dragonflies, this resolution is spread throughout a large region of the eye. Whereas in Holcocephala, this high resolution vision is limited to only about 20 units at the centre of the eye. Holcocephala's small size means that it cannot distribute these large lenses throughout the entirety of the eye. Even the ones it does have have squashed facets round to the side. The effect on us would be putting on a pair of binoculars. While you may have better resolution over a region, allowing you to see targets further away, it means that the rest of your vision is compromised and you don't have such a wide field of view. The next question we had to answer is how does Hogsefler catch its prey? This is more difficult than it first seems, because it's so quick, as you'll see when you watch this video. In this video, Hogsefler takes off, catches a target, and flies back to its perch. Blink and you'll miss it, and that's no figure of speech. So we have to use high-speed video cameras that can shoot at 1000 frames per second and slow it down 40 times for our viewing. In order to study flight behaviour, we got Hogsefler to chase after dummy targets, silver beads on fishing line. By using two high-speed video cameras, we can use the image disparity to reconstruct the flight in three dimensions like this one. Once we've reconstructed the flights in three dimensions, we can see they bear a common characteristic, which is that the line of sight, or range vector, that connects the target to the fly remains parallel even as it translates through space. This means that if we grab all the range vectors and stack them one on top of the other, they will roughly align. This is a characteristic that is associated with constant bearing navigation. It's the same means by which we know where to run to catch a flying ball. We maintain the angle between the ball and the external environment constant over time, correcting if necessary, and this means that we can ensure contact. What's more, we can show that this is not just a pre-calculated route. Hogsefler doesn't just sit at the top of a stick and choose a particular path in which to intercept the target. If we get the target to double back on itself and change velocity, we see that Hogsefler compensates by turning and still manages to intercept the target, something it wouldn't be able to do if it was merely picking a set route. If we look at the speed of Holcocephala as it approaches the target, we find that it massively accelerates at the start of the flight and maintains a high speed through the middle of the flight. Only when it is below 30 centimeters away from the target does it begin to decelerate, and in fact it decelerates to match the speed of the target marked by the dotted line. When flights are much longer, Holcocephala will more than double the speed of the bead, but then right at the end will drop down and match it almost exactly. We do not yet know how Holcocephala knows that it is 30 centimeters away from the target. 
or what the trigger is for this deceleration behaviour. But this lock-on phase means that Hog Circular's interception is much slower than would otherwise be, and this greatly increases the catch probability, but it's counterintuitive. We would tend to assume that a predator wants to intercept prey as fast as possible, but instead Hog Circular opts for this tack that actually increases the time to collision by about 30%. Now it could be that this behaviour is actually a correction and that before that Hog Circular is going way off course, but by plotting where Hog Circular would have got to had it maintained its speed, we can see that Hog Circular would have been within the right region to catch the target. So it's not simply a reaction to error on the part of Hog Circular. Instead, it looks like a deliberate behaviour so as to increase the probability of the catch. During this study, we have learned how a tiny insect manages to catch its prey, and in the future, we hope to investigate the mechanisms and neural systems that drive this behaviour.